Josh Rogers is a huge name in the world of sim racing and esports. A winner of the 24 Hours Le Mans Virtual, a two-time winner of the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup, and the 2019 VRS GT iRacing World Champion. Rogers has taken on some of the best in the business and gone head-to-head -head with none other than Formula One World Champion Max Verstappen. We caught out with the Aussie to discuss his route into sim racing, taking on Formula One's best and his aspirations for the coming season. Josh, well, thank you for joining us today. How are you, first and foremost? Yeah, good. Fantastic. Obviously, um, lots of prep going on at the moment, but um, yeah, ecstatic off the off the back of uh, Virtual Mall Series. Brilliant. We're here today to talk about sort of sim racing in general, your experiences and racing against some big names. So I'll start off with how did you get into sim racing? Um, I guess it started very, very early for me. Um, it was, well, back maybe, um, I mean, I always had a, a background in racing. Uh, my family was always into it. My brother did motocross, I did karting. Um, and sim racing kind of stemmed from that, I guess. Uh, initially, I guess, seriously, um, what started as kind of like a tool. Um, but really, I've been playing games since I was a very little kid. Um, you know, back in, I don't know, 2005, when I was uh, just a little tacker. And um, yeah, obviously, it's grown a lot since then. Um, started professionally, uh, I guess, three or four years ago, four years ago, um, for obviously Coanda uh, Esports, Porsche. And um, yeah, it's it's been fantastic. Um, so far, I think there's nothing that I could really say that uh, would or that I would change to lead me to this point, I guess. Um, it's yeah, it's been a fantastic ride and um, something that I look forward to uh, to continuing well into the future. But yeah, it stems from a long, long background um, of, of racing and motorsport, not only from myself, but my family also. So since your early days in sim racing and esports, how has the sport changed? um it's changed significantly i guess not only just for me but i think for everybody um mainly for me i guess the <laughs> back from when i started i was uh, a, bit, a bit more of a kid and uh, maybe didn't take it quite so seriously as i did now um but for the industry as a whole um things have changed so much especially in the last few years um it seems weird to say it but covid was a good thing for our sport um, it, it brought everyone indoors and, and brought a lot more attention on that, especially in the, the motorsport world where um, people couldn't go out racing um, on the weekends and everyone turned to sim racing because of that. Obviously, it put a lot of pressure on us, um, especially Coenda as a team. Um, but I think it's, uh, you know, we handled it as best as we could. And um, with that, the industry has grown so much. I think there's so many series now that we're seeing, especially the more virtual series, for example, um, that simply probably wouldn't have happened had those events not um, kind of, um, you know, occurred. Uh, obviously, the, the very first iteration of that uh, that series, that event, was in replacement of the um, the, the real life um, virtual Le Mans, or Le Mans 24, sorry. So, um, yeah, it's uh, so much has changed because of that. The industry has grown immensely, um, something that I'm very grateful for. Um, but obviously it still has a long way to go, um, finding its kind of way in terms of um, establishing as itself as its own eSport. Um, but that's a journey that I'm very excited to, to begin to take. Yeah, obviously it's a, a long road of progression for the sport in general. But one key thing is it is always developing. Do you feel like those the, the sims are closely are moving closer and developing closer to reality? And what and if they are, what pace are they growing at? Um, I mean, it's difficult to say, seeing as I haven't really had the the real world experience. But from what you know, I hear, I think a lot of sims sometimes lack in one particular area. Another sim might pick up on that, but lack somewhere else. Um, so it's difficult to really say where it's at. Um, I guess from me, for from a competitive standpoint, I don't really mind um, whether it's realistic or not. Um, it's just a matter of it being um being good to drive and being a fair competitive platform for us to to race on um but i think for sure um platforms are getting closer and closer to the real thing there's no doubt about that especially with hardware developments as well um which really that's the biggest connection you have um which is for sure the most important part 
Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, every sim um, probably has a little ways to go yet before it, it starts to kind of replace the real thing. But um, for sure, it's it's at a stage now where it's extremely close, um, and real life drivers are constantly using the sim to kind of hone their skills and and prepare themselves for for a race weekend. Um, you know, there's so many things that do translate. Um, while maybe the tiny, tiny little details aren't there, um, as long as you know how to distinguish those, um, it can absolutely be a very useful tool. And of course, we see that um, in racing. Yeah, obviously, it's growing and growing in terms of its popularity all the time. And you mentioned COVID has really helped help that. But um, what is the audience for sim racing? Do we see a similar to traditional motorsport? Do we see a traditional audience? Um. I don't know. I guess it's tricky to say. Uh, up until now, yes. Um, I think uh, it's pretty clear that, um, you know, people uh, enjoy sim racing for the element that, um, you know, maybe they weren't quite as um, lucky to be able to do the real thing. And it's the same thing for me, a lot of the part too. Um, you know, you go sim racing on the weekends um, because it's much more accessible. And as a result, then you kind of find yourself um well well within that ecosystem and that kind of um i guess a community um and and you find that there and uh yeah like i say it was a bit like that for me um i think it's a lot like that for most um and that's probably where that um that kind of connection comes through uh moving on to some of your own experiences um Obviously, we see professional drivers taking part in sim racing all the time, and you actually went up against Max Verstappen in the recent Le Mans, virtual Le Mans. How was that experience? Um, obviously, it's eye-opening. Um, for me, I, I like to just think of it as going up against any other um, competitor. Obviously, um, a series like that brings a lot of attention on us sim races um, from that element of it because you you bring in the requirement of, of bringing a driver from from the real world um, which to be honest has been fantastic um, not only for the series or the the sports but also for us drivers too because we can learn a few extra things um, obviously from a driving side of things usually it's not always the case um, but the, the the drivers that are more adapt to the sim generally do tend to do that bit better um, matter of getting those tiny, tiny little bits out of themselves um, within that sim that they're used to. But there's so many things, maybe it's from racecraft, uh, setup building, um, feedback that you can kind of give to an engineer um, or just being able to understand what the car's doing yourself. Um, all these elements definitely help us as drivers as well to, to progress. So it's, it's certainly not a one-way street, um, but yeah, um, obviously it's, it's fantastic for the sport as a whole um and it's an exciting element but yeah like i say i always try and just look at it as, as another competitor and um you're out there racing doesn't matter who you're racing against but um you know you're racing you mentioned you just try to see it as another competitor but do you feel any extra pressure when you're going up a name like that and are you aware whilst you're in the heat of the moment that that's who you are racing um of course we're aware um but no i, I don't necessarily feel like it adds any pressure um, I mean, I've, I've had my fair share of races with Max now over the past few years and you kind of, um, like anyone else, you, you look at them and kind of try and understand the way maybe they race. Um, it helps you, uh, kind of formulate your attack in that sense of the word or, or defense. Um, so no, for me, it doesn't really necessarily add any extra pressure. Um, but for sure it adds another element, um, because it's not necessarily someone that you're racing week in, week out, um, which yeah obviously adds that and you kind of need to be ready to make that change um but yeah for sure it's uh it is yeah it's exciting uh, as always but yeah no it, for me it doesn't add any extra pressure do you change any of your preparations or adjust anything depending on who you're racing um no no not at all um obviously each different person has different driving styles so you do need to kind of maybe uh, adjust that slightly but for me normally i don't necessarily do that um maybe it's just you know a particular right in that moment maybe you um someone is maybe particularly aggressive 
um, and might go for a smaller gap than someone else. So you need to kind of keep that in mind um, in terms of defending your position or whatnot. Um, other than that, though, to be honest, um, no, things don't necessarily change too much. Um, it's a matter of, I guess, in that scenario, just trying to do the best job you can um, and, and um, focus on the driving more than anything. If you do need to change those minor things, it's very, very minor. Um, it's never like a completely change your driving style around somebody. Um, but uh, it's maybe just those tiny little things. Obviously, you went up against Max at Le Mans, but you took pole position at that event. How was that experience and what was that like? Um, obviously, it was it was nice. It was fantastic. Um, it was fun, enjoyable. Uh, made that evening, that Friday evening, much more, more pleasant because we were kind of going into that, obviously, very... Uh, with the unknown of not quite sure where we stacked up against everyone else. Um, grateful that, yeah, I was able to take that second pole um, from well, the first and I guess the LMP class at Le Mans for, for Porsche. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it was, um, it helped definitely boost the motivation going into the race. Let's say it put us in, in a better position um, than, you know, if we had to come back from P6, especially in the beginning um, when, although the real drivers are starting and sometimes there is a bit of a, a discrepancy in terms of, um, I guess, skill level between some to others, uh, just with how uh, comfortable they are in the sim. And that's perfectly natural. Um, so being kind of off that front row helps kind of get you out of trouble in the beginning and, and just kind of then focus on your race. Obviously we lost the the position to Max in the first chicane, um, but we still stayed extremely close throughout the first in and we were able to then jump them in the pit stop. Um, which really was our plan um, going into that. We we knew that that was probably going to be how it played out. Um, but uh, yeah, in the end, it, it worked out for us um, in in that particular scenario. Um, but uh, but yeah, no qualifying going into the race. Um, it certainly boosted the morale um, of everyone, let's say, especially with the one-two. The issues with that sim were well documented. Did you experience any of that yourself or was it smooth running? Um, no, we did have a couple, um, a couple disconnects, but um, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, that was the card that we were dealt. Um, all we could do is kind of go out there from that and and try and do the best job we could and maximize um, after that. I mean, in total, I think we did lose you know a minute and a half or so, maybe even slightly more, um, which in the end would have been the difference between winning the race and not, but you don't know that in the moment. Um, and we're certainly the team that always is in that mindset that um, you never give up right until the end or until the end. Um, and we we did that and we exercised that throughout. Um, even, you know, coming up until that last stint, you know, the gap is like 20 something seconds and you it's only 10 laps per stint. Really, it's, it's a very slim chance of getting it done, um, but we never gave up and we kept pushing. Um, obviously in the end, P2 was, was all we could do. And that was enough to seal the championship. So that was obviously a focus as well, but um, yeah, we, we just kind of took it on the chin, moved on, thought, okay, this is what we have now. Um, let's make the most of that. And um, yeah, that's always kind of the way that we've gone about things. And I don't see that changing. Is it a competition you're looking to return to next season? Um, I hope so. It's, it's a fun one. Um, it's uh, completely different to what we normally do um on a yearly basis often we, we focus a lot or in, in the past at least on, on more sprint style races um and adding the endurance element into it multi-class it's a different platform um it helps kind of i guess build that skill um on the, that platform um in our factor too but um yeah no it's, it's one that certainly i would like to be able to return to um it'd be nice to to go for for the win once more um in uh, in Le Mans, but um yeah Obviously, we'll see how things pan out. Uh, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't, but uh, it would be very nice to. Switch into a different championship. The new ESL R1 championship has the potential to shake up sim racing. Do you agree with that and why? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, agree with that. Um, obviously, it's it's a new platform, um, one that's still in very early access. Um, but the thing that excites me most about that is not only their kind of, um, I guess, focus on uh, the community and the drivers in terms of building the platform around them, um, but also bringing in that that ESL element. Um, it's uh, it's something that we haven't seen in sim racing. Um, having someone so big on board um, for that, um, you know, a, a corporation that handles 
pretty much literally every esport competition that you can name under the sun um, and is now doing that for sim racing. I think it's difficult not to be excited about that, um, seeing where that could go in the future, in the years to come. Obviously, it's something that in the first season, it, it's not going to um, completely change the game. Um, I think we all know that. But uh, this is a longer term project, um, hoping to be around for that. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's exciting, uh, for that reason, especially, um, seeing where they could take it and, and, um, not only building or it helping kind of build the platform of sim racing, esports, how that kind of connects to each other, but also that of the teams and the drivers too, um, helping us make a career out of something that we love doing. So, um, it's difficult not, yeah, to be excited about that. And, um, it's exciting to see where the future goes with that partnership. What do Porsche and Coanda hope to get out of the competitions, you know? Um, to win. <laughs> That's obviously the, the main focus. Um, you know, we're, we're representing um, Coanda Esports, which is, uh, which is uh, a team that's always been um, so focused on success. And we've had plenty of that in the past and look to continue. And, and also representing a company like Porsche, um, one that has an illustrious career in motorsport, um, doesn't matter where it was, whether it's GT racing, um, prototypes at Le Mans, Daytona, doesn't matter. Um, Porsche has, has always been around in that. And we look to continue that in the virtual world. Um, obviously starting out with the GT3R, um, and, um, and yeah, you know, it just, it's an honor to be able to, to represent such, uh, iconic brands, not only in motorsport but also sim racing and, and combining them together i think is only a recipe for success but um obviously we'll go into it with um you know open eyes and and try to just make the most of what we have in the beginning um it's important to to always stay focused and, and never get complacent it doesn't matter whether you go into round one whether you're p last or p1 um you always have to keep pushing and um yeah obviously we'll, we'll look to try and continue that success for uh, for both brands and also ourselves as drivers absolutely not all the circuits for the competition have been announced yet are there any you're expecting or are there any you want to see appear on the lineup um honestly i'm not too sure um i think it, as an australian <laughs> i'd love to see bathurst although i don't know that that's um in the sim or going to be in the sim um but uh but yeah uh, i think for the moment really all we know is what's there um and to be honest they're fantastic tracks um so i'm very very much looking forward to, to driving those in in different formats and um racing against some new faces but some old ones too and um yeah obviously uh, looking forward to, to getting started but um those three tracks in the beginning i think uh, are going to be um to be honest extremely fun anyway so i'm looking forward to it Speaking of getting started, the season's not far away now. What are your sort of expectations, your hopes, and your own personal targets for the coming campaign? Um, I guess starting out, I just want to, to try and do the best job I can. Um, coming out of the first round, you know, if it, it doesn't go well or it does, um, if I know that I've put in the most effort that I could and, and try my best, that's all I can really ask for. Um, obviously, it'd be nice to to go into the the first season and kick it off with um, some strong results and um, and focus on the championship at the end of the year, which I think is, is something that I certainly want to do um, and will be gunning to do. But um, obviously it's new formats, uh, completely new series, a, a sim that we haven't necessarily had the most experience on. So there's a lot of unknowns, um, but we'll go into it, um, yeah, with, uh, with open eyes and, and try and just yeah maximize it but yeah it'd be obviously nice to, to be able to go for those wins and um and that's certainly the goal but um we'll see what we get come round one and just finally you've currently got the bike back and we can see on your shirt there the porsche logo porsche a huge name in motorsport and the world of automobiles in general how important is it that those brands continue to back esports and sim racing going forward oh it's huge um it's brings that element of motorsport into what we're doing um you know especially for esl r1 um also with the backing from the, the bigger esports orgs um it's helping really bring the two worlds together 
um, and uh, having the manufacturer backing, um, especially not only at Porsche, but for the series for all the other manufacturers that are involved as well. Um, it's uh, massive for, for sim racing. It's on a level that we haven't seen it before. And it really helps bring that attention um, to the competition, whether it's from the, the more motorsport background or esports. Um, and really, that's all we could ever hope for. Um, and uh, looking forward to hopefully seeing it lead to a prosperous future. Well, Josh, thank you very much for sitting down with us today and all the best for the coming season. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time.